All right, thank you everyone for being here. We're gonna learn today about an introduction of a webinar of the courses about walking the Holy Land. And this is only the introduction. There will be later details and specific subjects that we're gonna learn about. So only today is a webinar about an introduction about the online courses. And the name of this webinar is Walking the Holy Land. And I took this picture, by the way, from a Bedouin tent, and I like to use it with the tea and the heat. So welcome to my online courses webinar. Let me tell you why I created Walking the Holy Land online courses. And by the way, this is a picture of the Sea of Galilee with one of the groups hiking down. Many people had the privilege to make the journey to Israel and they are so blessed because they made it. But nowadays it's not possible for many people, for many reasons they can't make it. It's too expensive for some people. It's for others, it's physically challenging. And especially for elderly people and others are so busy, busy at work, busy with their families. And also the main reason why people don't come to the Holy Land, to Israel, because they feel anxious traveling in the Middle East area. And the main reason today what people is not coming to the land is because of pandemics and coronavirus. And this is why on my heart was people can't do it nowadays. I want to bring the Holy Land to their homes, to their own offices. So why another online course? I know today there are so many courses all around, but why another one? Because you will learn about the Holy Land from your own home, from your own office, even from your mobile phone, anytime, anywhere you like. I am using the Western technology to teach about Jesus through the Middle Eastern eyes. It's amazing how we can put the two things together. You will receive quality virtual biblical teachings and you will learn at your own pace and at your own comfort and at your own time. And I took this picture by the way, in one of the villages in the Judean hills. So you see the Judean hills all the way in the background. <clears throat> now, this is the big picture about presenting all the courses and understanding Jesus in the Middle Eastern eyes. This is like only a background, no details, but in general. In order to understand Jesus in his mindset, you need to learn about the land of the Bible, about the geography of the Holy Land. That's the number one thing first you have to learn about to understand Jesus in a better way. Second, we will learn about the cultures, the customs, and the context of scripture. There will be courses speaking about culture, for example, about Jesus culture, Jewish culture, or about the Roman culture. We're gonna speak about customs. We're gonna learn about weddings. We're gonna learn about washing the feet. There's a lot of customs in the Bible. When you understand it, you understand Jesus in a better way. And then we're gonna learn about context. So today I'm gonna give you only an example of each culture, custom, context. And the third thing, when you start to read the word of God, to read scripture, 
With this in background, the land of the Bible, the culture, the custom, and the context of the first century, more clarity, more correction and confirmation will happen when you read the word of God. The most important is scripture. So you will read it in Jesus' eyes, in the Middle Eastern perspective. And then after you understand it, you learn how to apply it to your own life. Now we said about the land of the Bible. Where is the Holy Land? Where is Israel? It's in the center of the world. And look how tiny is the land. And why God chose his beloved son to come to this unimportant tiny place in the, wor in the world. Why this location? And this is what we're going to learn. Because location is so much important. And geography matters. Because it changes the way you will understand the Bible. And when you understand geography, you will understand the events that took place in certain specific locations. And you will understand the people groups. And when you understand the people groups, you will understand their identity with the help of geography. It will result in a deeper appreciation of God and will benefit your spiritual life. So geography matters because geography speaks about the pages of the Bible and it will be important to understand the land and to understand the spiritual things happen. And you have to understand the location of the Holy Land is between Africa, Asia, and Europe, and even in history. This is the map from the Crusader time in the 11th century. And Jerusalem is in the center of the world because of its important location, location, location. Our faith is rooted in history, in geography, and archaeology in a place called the Holy Land. So why me? Why to study these courses with me? I have put my 20 years of experience as an indigenous believer, speaking and understanding the languages of Jesus to walk you through scripture. These online courses will take you through a journey to see the land of the Bible through Jesus' Middle Eastern eyes. I'm a Maronite Aramean indigenous Christian. Now, Aramean is Syriac. It's different than Armenian. A lot of people mix with that. Aramean, we speak Aramaic and Hebrew. And because of the Maronite community, the early church, Aramean speaking, when we read scripture, we can understand it through Jesus' eyes. Because Jesus also speaks Aramaic and Hebrew. These are Semitic languages. And I am an Israeli licensed tour guide. I was raised and born in the old city of Jerusalem and the streets of the Via Dolorosa, nearby the Church of the Holy Sepulcher. It's crucifixion, Calvary, the Holy Sepulcher. It was like one block from my home. But my house in the Christian quarter in the old city is nearby Station 8 of the Via Dolorosa. Have you heard about the Via Dolorosa? Where Jesus went all the way from condemnation to Calvary. There are 14 stations and Station 8 happened to be my home, my playground. And this is me guiding a group in my playground, the Via Dolorosa, where Jesus walked through the streets of Jerusalem, carrying his cross. And this is station number eight. My home is here in this area, just not far from here. It's my playground and battleground where I grew up and lived. 
So it's very genuine for me to be a tour guide, especially my background is the Maronite, the Aramean Christians. Our ancestors belong to the early church from Lebanon and Syria. Our language is Aramaic, the same language where Jesus was teaching. By the way, to be more clear, Jesus was speaking Galilean Aramaic. We were speaking Eastern Aramaic. So there's slight differences, but we can understand each other. Like you're saying Spanish and Portuguese. Anyway, there are 11 Semitic languages in the Middle East. So during these online courses, we will learn Hebrew words. I'm gonna teach you words in Hebrew. Even scholars today agree and are aware of sentences that Jesus spoke from his own mouth in Hebrew. I want to say one sentence to you in Hebrew and translate it. And probably Jesus said that sentence at the Sermon on the Mount in Galilee. Malchut Shamayim. Why I'm saying that? Because I want you to hear it. The words in Hebrew. Malchut Shamayim. Malchut is kingdom. Shamayim is heavens, the kingdom of heaven. This is the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus spoke about the bedrock of the New Testament. And he also spoke Aramaic. I'm gonna learn also some Aramaic words. I'm gonna give you one word in Aramaic, two words. Abuna bishmayu. Abuna means our father, bishmayu in heavens. And this is how the Jesus taught his disciples the Lord's prayer in Aramaic. And we will have a course talking about the Lord's prayer in the original language. And we're gonna learn Greek words because Jesus spoke some Greek and that was the word around him and the culture. So we, the Aramean Christians have an identity and our ethnic identity is Aramaic Phoenician. By the way, we are Phoenicians, which are indigenous people to the Middle East and Old Phoenician language, from it came the Hebrew language, came the Aramaic language, and came the Semitic languages. So Old Phoenician is very similar to Hebrew. And I'm staying here in Texas now for a sabbatical. And an idea came to my mind to do an ancestry test, DNA test. So I ordered it online and I received the tube and I took, I read exactly what I have to do and it sent a live put, send it by mail. And like few months ago, recently, I received the results and it was 100% from the Middle East. Now I was not so much surprised because my mom is from the area of the Middle East, actually in the North of Israel, Originally, Maronites are from Lebanon and Syria. And my dad, also side of the family, is also from that part of the world. So originally, we are Phoenicians from 100%. Usually, if you do this DNA test, you have 70%, this 30%, this 10%, this 1%. This. But what I was teaching and saying that my descendants, the early home church, the Maronites, the Arameans, also was proved by science. So we, the Aramean Christians, lived in the same geographic locations of the Jewish believers, early Jewish believers. And by the way, have you heard about the liturgy of St. James? St. James was the brother of Jesus. We till today in the Maronite church use the same liturgy in Aramaic and there's not much change from the first century till today, a continuation of 2000 years. And there's no effect of the Roman Catholic or the Western over the church. So we are, the, belongs to the early church. We are indigenous. And not only am I, my tradition, home church, Maronites, not only that, I'm also a spirit-filled believer 
I believe in Jesus Christ, to a born again Christian. And I believe and grounded in the word of God. And this is how I approach the teachings from that mindset. Also, I'm an ordained minister of the gospel under the Living Faith Christian Church and Center. This is a non denominational church and by Bishop Raymond Johnson. So why did I choose to study a tour guide? This is, by the way, a picture of me on the Mount of Olives and teaching a small group about my playground here. So I've been seeing as a kid growing on the streets of the Via Dolorosa, people from all over the world coming to Jerusalem. I had so much on my heart. I want to show them what is special and what is meaningful for us as Christians growing up in the Holy Land. I had this compassion on my heart and joy to teach them the depth of the meanings of the scripture with the street I grew up. This is the place in Capernaum, the synagogue, where I'm teaching scripture. And why to take these courses with me? Because I have an ancient, unbroken footprint in following the steps of Jesus and the pages of the Bible. What we will learn about? We will learn about how did the people in the first century live, eat, work, travel. We will learn about their daily life and my style of teaching, I call it the three C's, the culture of the first century, the customs and the context. To understand my aim in these courses, for you to understand the mindset in the land of Israel. So I'm teaching the three C's here. And I'm going to give you an example of each one. I'm going to give you an example of the culture and the custom and the context. Of course, these courses will be focusing on these three things, but more details about each one of them. But today, I'm going to give you an example. Culture. Why culture is important? Culture is a strong part of people's lives. It influences their views, values, humor, and their loyalties, even their fears and hopes. And Jesus was a Jew. That was his culture. He was born in Bethlehem as a Jew. He grew up as a kid in Nazareth as a Jew, went to the synagogue to study Torah. And he was a Torah observant Jew. And then he went to Galilee to teach as a rabbi, as a Jew. And rabbis had disciples. And he grew up among the Jewish community. And after finishing his ministry as a Jew in Galilee, he went down to Jerusalem as a Jew to be sacrificed in the temple as the Lamb of Judah. And when he come back, he's going to come back as the Lion of Judah. So it's very important to understand the culture of Jesus. And he's been preaching a lot in synagogues. Look what is written in scripture, Luke 4.15. He taught regularly in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. He was a teacher. He was a rabbi. And he spent so much time reading scripture. Let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. If you were raised as a Jew in Nazareth, as a young kid from age three, you go to the synagogue. And in the synagogue, you start to memorize scripture. You do it by repetition, 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 by memorization, memorization, memorization. So Jesus from a young age was memorizing scripture by heart. The first five books of Moses. Today is very hard for us even to open the Bible. But they knew it by heart. Jesus grew up studying Torah. 
and I want to challenge you a little bit. And I have a question for you to think about. When do you think Jesus, as a kid, as a Jew, realized that he is Torah? He is scripture. Imagine he is studying in the synagogue and he is reading from Torah and say, it's me. Probably, let me stretch you a little bit. He did not sleep that night. But at age 13, you become mature and you go all the way to the temple of Jerusalem to recite the Shema. And this is he knew he was growing and maturing and he knew that he was the messiah all the time from his as a kid all the way up so studying torah he was jewish it's important to read torah to read scripture second is customs why customs are important a custom is a pattern of behavior that is followed by members of a particular culture most people adhere to customs without any real understanding of why they exist or they got started. Let me give you an example. Washing the feet custom in the first century. Due to warm climate in Israel, it was so common for people to walk barefoot in every daily activity. And the kitchen outside the house, and they walk on dirt and this is why foot washing is so much a regular thing to do, like eating and sleeping. It's something essential activity in a daily life and you cannot do without it. So that was the custom at that time. And the custom when someone enters a house, immediately you have to wash his feet because it's appropriate, it's hospitality. And look what's written in Luke 7, 44, turning towards the woman. He said to Simon, do you see this woman? I entered your house. You gave me no water for my feet. So here, if we understand the custom, we understand the verse in the Bible. And Simon did not wash the feet of Jesus. And that is something like shameful, like not respecting. But here is a woman. She has wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. This woman is doing it so better and deeper. She crossed every custom, every culture. She's a woman. She can't touch even a Jew, a man. But because Simon forgot to put the water, she came and washed Jesus with water and her hair. And this is Jesus. It's redeeming. She's saying, we are sorry. You are number one priority. So she redeemed the situation. So when you understand this culture, you understand the verses of the Bible. So his hospitality, washing the legs. People used to wash the feet of visitors as a form of greeting and expression of hospitality. And this is, she showed so much hospitality for Jesus. Now we're going to talk about context. Why context is important. In general, the meaning of the words is found within the context of sentences. And how a sentence finds its context is in the other sentence that surround it. All is related. All is connecting. We're reading scripture. We must understand what is the context of the passage. Because every verse in the Bible has a specific historical context, which has to do with culture, custom, time in history, the writer, the author. We need to learn about the audience also. And also, as I said, we need, need to learn about the geographical locations and the political situation in every single verse. And that will help us to understand the occasion and the purpose of the writing to understand the scripture. So historical context help us to see more clearly the circumstances around events in time with which are not familiar. I'm gonna give you an example of context. And this is like, because I know the languages, I'm gonna give you 
and some Hebrew words. When someone is having a good eye and context of an idiom, a good eye, ein tova in Hebrew, ein tova, which means in Hebrew, it is a generous person. It is someone that is helpful. But if you don't know the Hebrew language, you will not understand what is a good eye. Many scholars were like, did not understand for so many years what is a good eye. But if you know the Hebrew words, ein tova, means a generous person, someone that is really serving. He have a serving heart. But if you read a bad eye, ein ra'a. Again, I will repeat it, ein Ra'a, which literally means in Hebrew, stingy or greedy, or someone who cares about himself and he does not care about anything and he is blind to the needs of the others. So that's what means bad eye. And now when we read the verse in the Bible, Matthew chapter 6, 22 and 23, and put this in what I said in your background, you will understand the verses in a better way. That's context. The eye is the lamb of the body. If your eyes are healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eyes are unhealthy, which means self-centered, your whole body will be full of darkness. If then the light within you is darkness, how great is the, that darkness? So if your eyes are unhealthy, it's ein ra. If you have light, it's healthy, your eyes is healthy, ein tova. So if you are a generous person, you'll be full of light. But if you are stingy and self-centered, you'll be full of darkness. So if the light within you is darkness, how great is that darkness? You see, now you understand it. That's context. Give you another example. In the Old Testament, I got some verses from the Old Testament, also applied for the New Testament too. But when you read the idiom, fallen face, it means sad. He is sad, sadness. When you read in Genesis 22, 17, about the seed, let me tell you in the original Aramaic seed, zera means zera. Why I'm saying these words? because I want you to hear it. Zera, whenever you read seed, it's descendants. And whenever you hear in the New Testament or the Old Testament, someone slept or she slept, means in that culture died. So if you know the Hebrew context, you'll understand more in a deeper way the pages of the Bible. So in these monthly online lessons, I will teach you so much more, not only about the culture, the custom, and the context, but about sites, biblical sites. In the online course, Walking in the Holy Land, I will take you to the off-beaten sites in Israel. Not only that, we're going to learn more about historical geography. There will be a complete lesson about the geography of the land of the Bible. And there's a complete course too about the differences between the Eastern and the Western culture. Western is a great culture. It's all about achieving. It's all about being functional. It's like the right hand. It's like at all the time is like you want to reach more and achieve more. In the Eastern mindset, it's like the left hand. It's not about achieving, it's going with the flow. I will be doing a lot of examples about East and Western cultures. One more example, the left hand, the Eastern people, we are emotional, it's nearby the heart, but it's the right brain, which is not intelligent much, or it's not like uh, in good in numbers, we go more with our feeling. In the West, the right hand and the left brain, smart. So 
we need both actually. We need the Eastern culture and the Western culture together to understand the pages of the Bible. There's another point about the Shema. The Shema, this is a prayer that every Jew in the first century prayed twice a day. Jesus would pray this prayer twice a day. I'm going to recite the first verse in English and in Hebrew for you in order you to hear it, the Shema. In Hebrew, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. In English, hear O Israel, the Lord is God, the Lord is one. But when you hear the English here, it's not exactly meaning here. Shema, Shema in Hebrew means listen, or more, Shema means obey, obey me. Obey me from your hearts. So when Jesus uh, and the Torah is saying, hear O Israel, means obey me Israel. God the Father is rejoicing because his people is obeying him. So we're going to learn about the Shema. And also another course or lessons will be about the Lord's Prayer in Hebrew and Aramaic, verse by verse. So why it's so valuable to learn in this perspective? Because these courses will transform your life to be thinking more like Middle Eastern Jesus. Look what is written in Romans 12, 2. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. As a result, I like the three C's example. When we read the word of God in the Middle Eastern mindset, more clarification will take place in our lives, more correction of understanding the word of the Bible. And it will confirm firm our faith. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to give you an example of each thing. First, we're going to start with clarification. Do you have clarity in your Christian walk or in your life? You know, we worry so much about so many things. Many times our focus gets shifted to the immediate problems and we feel being taken over by the circumstances in life, and especially what's happening in the world today, epidemics. And by the way, epidemics is not something in you, it's in the Bible. So we, when you understand the word of God, it will bring more clarity why epidemics is happening. And we, God does not want us to be confused. Look what is written in 1 Corinthians, 1433, for God is not a God of confusion, but of peace. When you learn Jesus' mindset, you will understand that God is a clear God. Then, correction. We live in an age very hostile to correction, and an age that it's all about me, me, me. I, I, I. It became a standard word. I want to do it my way. I know better. I know the best. Who are you to tell me what to do? We do not accept today someone to correct us. And look what is written in 2 Timothy chapter 3, 16 to 17. All scripture is God breath and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, correcting with love so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. We need each other from the East and the West to help to correct each other. And then the third C is confirmation. When you take these courses, a lot of confirmation of your faith will take place. Look, we live in a culture full of anxiety, disputes. We question everything. And there are so many people around us in culture, they deny our, like, 
Jesus' existence, and even in like Western countries, they're not anymore full of faith. And the challenge for us, whether we are going to obey Christ or the surrounding culture, how we can be much more solid, much more stronger in faith. These online courses will help you to be more grounded and gain more confidence in your Christian walk. The word of God, scripture will confirm our faith as it is strengthens, deepens, increases, and matures in the very depth of our hearts and being to existence to become stronger believers. So the Holy Spirit will give us the increased ability to practice our faith in every aspect of our lives and to witness Christ in every situation. That would be confirmation by the anointing of the Spirit of God. So I invite you to join me in these online courses and we will walk the Holy Land together with Jesus and his Spirit. I would like to show you a very short video from Jerusalem. Hello everyone, this is Andre, you guide from the Holy Land. We are standing at the lookout for the Temple Mount, the Mount of Olives, and the Western Wall. I am building a new online course to take you through a journey of 10 days discovering the land of the Bible. You're gonna learn about the culture, the custom, and the context of scripture through the Middle Eastern eyes. You're going to have a deep understanding of more clarification, more confirmation, and correction of understanding your faith. We're going to learn Aramaic, we're going to learn Hebrew, and we're going to learn Greek in order to see the first century culture through these online teachings. I want to encourage you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So that was from Jerusalem. And how does walking the Holy Land work? I will be your personal tour guide and teacher. I will bring you all those solid teachings to be live through lectures, including maps, pictures, videos from the Holy Land. You will receive it to your email, teaching directly to your email box. For whom are these courses dedicated? Pastors, church leaders, ministry elders, Bible teachers, students, anyone who wants to learn. It's for everyone available. What do you expect to pay for these online courses? Now, this is all for free. Just you need to subscribe. To my website and I will receive your email and I will send you these teachings. Do not hesitate. I will be your personal virtual tour guide. I will help you to walk with the Holy Land through these online courses and lessons and a lot of great, deep, meaningful teachings. This is the website. You have to sign in. There's a sign in button and to fill the information, and I will receive your email. The website is www.andreymubarak.com. Thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's such an honor and privilege to walk you through the Holy Land. I hope you enjoyed and had just a taste of understanding Jesus in the Middle Eastern eyes. And remember to pray for the peace of Jerusalem. Next lesson.
It will be an introduction about the land of the Bible. The lessons will be 30 minutes long. This is longer today because it's only an introduction, but each lesson will be around 30 minutes long. So join me in the, my Facebook group, Walking the Holy Land, if you want to receive more updates. Also, connect with me through social media, the links, stay in touch, and please share with others. Mostly, it's word to mouth. And also, I have a podcast. If you go to your iPhone or Android, and in the podcast, if you put Andre Israel, my podcast will show up. There's a lot of teachings in the podcast. There is a teaching of uh, to, I made a virtual tour for 10 days through the Holy Land in the podcast. So again, put my name, Andre, and then Israel in the podcast, and you can download it all for free. Also connect with me in my Facebook page and Instagram page. Online courses, Walking the Holy Land. I want to thank you for spending this time with me. It has been an honor and my privilege to walk you through this webinar. I hope you had enjoyed the content. And really, I pray from the bottom of my heart that you will be able to join and walk with me in these online teaching lessons. Now I want to show you how you can see what lessons are coming next and how you can register in advance to these lessons. Let me share the screen back with you. And you can go to my website, walkingtheholyland.com, and you can reserve for the free lesson by clicking here, or you scroll down and you go to the section of the upcoming classes. And here you can see all the classes that you need to register in. And you can see the time and the hour of the class. And you can choose what class fits you the best. And click here, RSVP. And put your first name, your last name, and your email. And submit. And you will receive the Zoom link to your inbox and you can add it to your calendar. One more thing, also log in my website and sign up and you will be having your own account and you will receive the lessons inside that account. And also I want to tell you, I am an author, a writer, and I wrote several books. You can find them in my website. And also you can go to Amazon, dot com and write my name Andre Mubarak and you can see all my books down here and I want to recommend this book One Friday in Jerusalem this is the first book I wrote and it speaks about my story and the street of the old city and the stations of the cross let me share the screen back with you. I am so much looking forward to be your personal tour guide and teacher, and we will be walking the Holy Land together with Jesus. Please share this webinar with your friends, families, church members to help me to spread these online teachings and reach more people to understand Jesus through the Middle Eastern eyes. Thanks a lot and God bless your hearts.